Hello folks, it's another apple tasting. Um, from the views what we've had on the last three, was it? I think three. Yeah. Um, you, seem to, you seem to like these uh, little videos. So anyway, we've got uh, we've got another 12 here. Um, we've actually there's actually going to be another one coming up. I think so. I've looked around the, the garden and the allotment and we've got quite a few more sorts uh, to look at. Uh, and as we move into the later part of the apple season, the, the character of the apples changes. Uh, what we've got this afternoon, we've got two mid-season apples, these first two. And then we've got the rest of them, uh, ten varieties, are actually late winter apples. And there's a bit of a problem when you taste these, because late winter apples don't taste quite the best when you take them straight off the tree. They're intended, they often taste a little bit tart, and they taste better after they've been kept for anything between a week and three months. But since this is a, an, an apple tasting now on uh, what is it, 14th of November, we're going to see what they're like, and we may revisit some of them when they get a bit sweeter after they've been stored for a while. Right, and you'll have to excuse the patter of rain. I'm hoping you can hear us okay. Um, it's basically pouring a rain outside and we are in the carport area and um, jackets on because it's feeling rather cool, a bit different to last week when it was above average temperatures. Um, and I'm talking louder because of, of the rain. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and to keep me awake folks because I had a bad night. Yeah. Right, shall we make a start then? Yeah, let's have a start. Now, me. the first one, the first apple here is a Leicestershire apple. It's a Leicestershire unique seedling, which we actually found in the village in Croft. Um, it's a cooking apple, but when it's been kept a while, like many cooking apples, it goes sweeter. And now, a month, a month or so after the first ones were ready, it's not a bad eating apple. So this is Chapman's Colossus. Mm. Well, it's, it's quite tasty. I yeah. could eat this. Uh, it tastes very much like a bought apple. Yeah, it does. It's quite firm, quite crunchy, mm. quite sweet. Very crisp. Yeah. Yeah, I do like this one. Yeah, it's good. And that's a cook apple. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You can see the apples are quite big. Here's another one. Frequently you can find an apple on the tree which weighs about a pound. I don't know what that is in metric, do you? Yeah, 400 grams. Okay, 400 grams, there we I go. I think it's 400 or 450. Yeah, so it's, it's quite a big apple and most of them are that size. Right, and the second one that we've got is an eating apple, quite a small one, called Margil, M-A-R-G-I-L. Oh, I can smell that. Mm. Got quite a strong scent. Mm, very sweet, not as not as firm and no, it's crispy not, as the last not one. a crispy one. It was a bit soft. Yeah, dish, but it's very tasty. I do mm. like that one. It's well. nice. Yeah, it's a nice flavour. Mm. Very sweet. I could eat easily eat one of them. Yeah, very sweet. No hint of bitterness at all. Very nice eater. So those first two then are um, mid-season apples, they don't keep very well, they probably keep for ooh, a fortnight, three weeks, but not, not really any longer. So unless you've got a big family folks, you, you, you're only going to eat about 14 of them, aren't you, if you have one a day? Yeah, that, so you, we, you don't want that many on your tree, will you? Well no, that's the problem with these mid-season apples, you don't want too many of them because what do you do with them? Uh, right, when we get to the, the other apples, these are all uh, very late apples. They're starting to come off the trees now. Uh, occasionally you get some that will hang into New Year. 
Uh, but the, usually the best way of keeping these apples is to pick them about now or in the next fortnight or so and keep them in a cool cool room or a cellar right. and they gradually go sweeter. Okay, now just before we get on to our next one Nigel, I've just been looking as my eye wanders on your table here. What is this mark? Ah. Because I've seen that on some of the apples. That's interesting. Now, this was mentioned in one of our previous videos. If, if I lean forward and hold it towards the camera, would, would yeah, you get to see yeah, that? Yeah, I'm sure I will. Can you see there's a sort of scar on it? There we go. A scar. And that is an apple pest that's caused that. Can you remember which one it was? No. It's actually apple sawfly. Oh, is it? Yeah, apple oh, sawfly. Right. That, that, the one that makes the apples go rotten very quickly. Mm. On some of the apples, the, um, when the grub um, tunnels around in the apple, it gives this scar-like mm. appearance, and that's how you tell. I've seen it before, it might yeah. have been one man. But talking of, um, talking of diseases and things, um, my actual, the Lord Lambourne, where, which is our main tree at home, actually had a great crop of apples this year. Mm. There was hardly any... Um, any damage to them, you know, very limited really, or big apples, um, and I think that was down to probably the spraying, what we did in this spring. Yeah, it was. Um, it, because it, our, we were doing it because we had that, um, what did we have on it? Oh, woolly aphids. Yeah, and yeah. it was, somehow we got, we thought we'd better spray in that. Yeah, so if, you, if you, I think you had spotted some sight, in fact, maybe that was it. Uh, well, well on, I don't know what it was, but anyway, we sprayed um, three times, and it it obviously must have worked. Combination of that and uh, the trap yes. for the um, codling. Y yes, woolly aphids. It's, it looks like sticky cotton wool on the apple tree, and if you see that, you have to get rid of it straight away. We didn't actually, you know, we had it all season. Yeah, well, the longer you, know, the longer you leave it, the more difficult the job is to get yeah, rid of it. Yeah. Um, and it's a fairly a fairly bad infestation on your tree, but yeah. I think the spraying for that must have helped against the sore fly as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Now, um, when you're tasting a, um, a late apple, you have to bear in mind that at this time of year, some of them are going to be slightly tart because they haven't reached their full flavour. Um, this one is Brayburn. Is that because we're not late enough yet? That's right, we're not quite late enough. Right. But it's interesting to see what they taste like now, and then we'll perhaps be yeah. able to compare it with what they're like later. Yeah. Okay. But most of these will keep until about March, some, some of them even later. Mm. So, Brayburn. This uh, is an apple which was discovered as a chance seedling in New Zealand. You may have heard of Brayburn. It's quite a well-known supermarket apple. But when you grow it yourself, it doesn't taste quite the same, it tastes better. Actually, that didn't taste too bad now, does mm. it? This, so, is a, yeah. this is actually up my tree, folks. Yeah. It's very juicy, very firm, and uh, quite sweet. It's got a more concentrated flavour than the ones you get in, yeah. the, in the supermarket. Yeah, that's a nice apple. We've got a little bit of scab on it. You can see, if you look at the, the fruit, black spots. But that doesn't affect the eating quality very much. It does put you off though, doesn't it? It does put you off a bit, yeah, if you're not sure what it is. But that's a nice apple. Is that just on the top, is it? It doesn't go deep in? It doesn't go deep in, uh, but it does affect the ability of the apple to store. Right. And if you waited, say, eight weeks with that, you'd find that some of these black dots had actually penetrated a little way. Okay, now does that Will that happen on the tree, or is it just when you take them off the tree? Well, I noticed about a month ago there wasn't any scab. I think it's the recent damp weather's done it, because it's fungus. Yeah. It's a fungal growth, yeah. and it, that's encouraged by dampness and uh, lack of wind. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, this apple here is an American apple called Christmas Pink. And it's another apple from Albert Etter's experimental orchard. 
it came very easily off the tree. It is a red fleshed apple, but it hasn't yet coloured up. Just starting to colour up a little bit. You can see it's yeah, slightly yeah, pink. Yeah, I spotted it, yeah. Now, folks, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but yeah. Well, this should go a lot darker when it's been stored a little while. Mm. It's not that different to the Braeburn, is it? It isn't, no. Nice flavour. Mm. It's firm and crisp and juicy. I think the Braeburn actually just has the edge in it. I think it does at the moment, but, yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, but it's not far up. Mm. Yeah, that's a nice apple. Very nice, yeah. Alright. I see here we've got a Lord Hindley. That's right, Lord Hindley. Um, that is an apple that dates from about 120 years ago when it was first discovered. It was a chance seedling and it was found somewhere in Worcestershire. Let's see what we're into that. It's quite a firm apple again. I can feel how firm it is when I'm cutting it. I've never tasted this one before. Well, it's very eatable. It's quite a rich flavour again. Mm. Sweet. There's a little more depth to the flavour than there was in that one or that one. Yeah, juicy, firm. Very, very nice. Very nice eating. I tell you what, Nigel. Yeah. If the next year is a good year for apples, what we could actually do is have a, like a little apple party, a tasting. Have a few people around and, mm. and see and yeah, we could do that, couldn't we? Yeah, we, we've had one or two of those this year with a, a limited number of people. We had one with four people. Yeah, last week. I mean, I don't, does apples go well with wine? Mm, I don't Anything? know. I, th yeah, I suppose so. Yes, as long as the wine isn't a strong flavour. We could perhaps have a combined evening or something next year. Mm, possibly. Yeah, we'll have to think about that. Mm. Mm. Right, so well, number six. Uh, this is a, an apple which we discovered in um, Surrey, in Guildford. It actually originates from Norfolk and it's called the Blackjack. Do you know the story? How, yeah. The name? yeah. Uh, I don't know why it's called Blackjack, no. but. We were contacted by um, a very old man about 10 years ago and he told us about these strange apples called blackjacks which he used to be given slices of by his mother um, for his school lunches in the 1920s and his school lunch consisted um, of just slices of apple. His mother would go outside to the tree even as late as April or May and she would pick some blackjacks off the ground they could store perfectly, apparently, in long grass until, um, until the spring. And she used to just slice them and give him a few slices and that was his lunch. So they're quite dry, they're long storing apples. Quite a nice flavour. That's what he told me anyway. So we put out a, a request on the website and eventually we were contacted by somebody who said, I've got a blackjack tree. And so we got some cuttings and we made some trees. And now this one is quite tart, yeah, which indi so. indicates it's not quite ready. But it's very early to eat blackjacks, you shouldn't really touch them very much before Christmas. But there are hints there that that's going to be quite nice later on. What do you reckon to it at the moment? Mine. It's the least favourite out of all of Yeah, them so it's, it's a little bit too acidic at yeah, the moment. But yeah. as you store an apple, the levels of the acid, no matter what the apple is, the levels of malic acid gradually decrease and this makes the sugars more prominent. And so the flavour increases with most apples as you store them, uh, if you're talking about late keeping apples. 
This one is a wild seedling which we found about 10 years ago in Bumblebee Lane in Leicestershire near um, Sharnford. It's clearly from a pit. Right, so you want to correct to that. Now, how do you know it's clearly from a pit? Is it because of the size? Uh, well, it's slightly small, yeah, that's one thing. And um, secondly, it was in the middle of a hedgerow, a rather overgrown hedgerow. Right. And we noticed one winter, I think it was in January, we noticed a few apples in the hedgerow. So do you think that maybe somebody threw an apple out the window of the car? Yeah, I think it's yeah. virtually certain that's what it was. Mm. That's a nice one. Yeah, and that's a very, very um, pleasant apple indeed, that mm. is. Which is why we decided to, uh, to graft some trees. Can you detect any hints of any other fruit in there? I wouldn't know, Nigel. I'm not going to yeah. eat <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I can hit, I can taste a hints of strawberry in that, and possibly hints of pineapple. It's quite a rich flavour, and you can see it's um, a sort of flattened conical shape. So it's quite an attractive fruit, though it is bicoloured. So it wouldn't be uh, one that would make the commercial grade these days, uh, with the the, um, the way the market operates at the moment. Because at the moment, the, uh, the preferred apples are single colour. Another apple found in a hedgerow. This one is from Norfolk, and it was found by a guy called Brian Durrant, and we call it Durrant's apple. Uh, we met this apple first time about 10 years ago and he told us it was very sweet and it's got quite an unusual taste. It's very firm. Yeah, it has got a unique yeah. taste. Yeah, it's got a different flavour altogether. But if you're blindfolded, you, you wouldn't think it was an apple, I don't mm. it's, it's what I call the Palma Violets flavour, and we have met this flavour in a few apples in the past. It was also present in the West Virginia Sweet, which we tasted yeah. uh, a, couple of, a couple of times back. Right, I knew it was yeah. very similar. And this is a very, very nice flavour for, for something different. It doesn't really taste like an ordinary apple at all. And you can see it's a pleasant colour, it's a sort of brindled colour, a sort of brick colour, all the way round. Mm. Hmm. Ah. Now, the la the, this one here, the last row, uh, this one, this apple here is Annie Elizabeth. This is a cooking apple. It's reputed to be the apple which keeps better than any other. You can see it's bicoloured. It originated in Leicestershire, in Leicester, in about 18, um, around about 1856, I think, somewhere around there. And uh, it was a chance seedling. It wasn't bred, it was a chance seedling. Uh, I don't want to slice that one up at the moment because I want to photograph it, but I've got some small ones which should taste just the same. So how come that they're much smaller? Normally they're all the same size, actually. Yeah, I found on the same tree that there were one or two on a lower branch. Because right. it obviously got less nutrients. Oh, I've got less yeah, nutrients. about it, yeah. yeah. My Lord Lambo in it. There yeah. was some, yeah. One or two. Yeah. That's what you reckon. It is a cooking apple, but it's starting now to go sweet. In fact, you wouldn't know that wasn't an eating apple, would you? No. It's not quite as rich a taste as some eating apples, but right. it's, it's sweet and crisp. And quite a, a well-balanced sort of taste. It's plenty of sugar and plenty of acidity as well. Mm. Mm. Right, next one is um, Mia Pippin. Now this is an apple we found near Wincanton. Uh, Mia is a little village near Wincanton. Where's Wincanton? Uh, Wiltshire. Oh, right. Wiltshire. 
And we noticed this apple on a little tree at the side of the road during a storm on February the 10th, about six years ago. We were driving along and it was a very low sun and there was a storm and we saw something very strange at the side of the road. I could have sworn, I said to Alison, that I just saw a little apple tree about as big as a Christmas tree full of fruit. So we turned the car around and put on our waterproofs and we walked back and there it was, a little tree about this high, full of apples. There must have been 50 or 60 apples on it and all the leaves had gone. It looked just like a Christmas tree. So we broke off a few twigs and we grafted some trees. And it's a very, very late winter keeping apple. This year uh, it's coming off the tree now, about two, two weeks into November. There you go. You can see the flesh is very, very white. Yeah. And we've noticed when we cut this apple, you can leave it 24 hours, it doesn't go brown. Quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, quite refreshing. Mm. It's got a fairly light taste. Very sweet, very crisp, inoffensive, quite a, quite a decent apple. But the strength of this apple is it keeps a long time. And you can sometimes pick it December or January or even February. Um, okay, the next one is an apple which we found about 10 years ago in the village in, in Croft. We call it Croft Late. We found it one Christmas, about December the 24th, Christmas Eve. Okay. And again, it's a late winter apple, quite sweet and hard. And it has quite a rich flavour, and when you keep it, it actually has a slight hint of celery in it, a sort of grassy taste. Can you taste that at the moment or has it not come through yet? I don't think my taste would no. be as good as yours. <laughs> I can't, I can't taste... It tastes nice though. Yeah, it's good. It's very sweet and firm. Very pleasant apple. You can see it has a red side and a green side. And this it's state... probably got the firmer skin of any of them so far. Yes, yes, that's right, it has, yeah. We usually pick these on yes. Christ Christmas morning. Getting caught in between my two. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we usually pick these off the tree on Christmas morning and have one with our, our Christmas lunch. Because of the red colour, it does help if you can put the tree in a fruit cage, because being red, it attracts birds, particularly in late December. And our last apple for today is another wild seedling which we found in Wibtoft, which is near High Cross. We call it Wibtoft Pippin. Uh, local knowledge is that it came from a pip. It is in somebody's garden and it's a typical Leicestershire apple. It's crunchy and sweet. Yeah, very nice. But that's very sweet, isn't it? Mm. Mm. It's a shame that so many people miss out on these different apples, isn't it? Yeah, the, the, the variation of flavours here is quite enormous yeah. and astonishing. It's difficult to describe some of the tastes. But um, I'm hoping that in the future we'll get a wider selection of interesting apples in the supermarkets and at grocers. But yeah, an interesting selection. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thanks for that Nigel. Okay. We'll uh, switch this off now. Mmm. Very tasty. It's going a bit slow. Yeah. <laughs>